Hello everyone, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian and today we are getting into a couple of samples sent to me from my friend Will. When he was passing through town recently, we are taking a look at two different batches of Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend. Now, this is fun for me because I am in an area where I don't come across Cigar Batch all that much. Actually, I was only offered a bottle of it one time and it was while a friend of mine was in transition from one store to another and I never got a bottle of it. So this is one that I've not seen out in the wild, that I've not gotten a bottle of myself. And even on past videos, I've had people mention when we're talking about what you get in a bottle versus the price you pay for it, saying that this is one of those bottles that they think is worth the value, but something I hadn't been able to try up until this point. And so we are taking a look at some older batches while he had sent several samples of stuff with Nancy Fraley's name attached to them. So we are taking a look at batch 22 and batch 46 of the Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend. For those who are not familiar with the Cigar Blend, this is blended whiskeys finished in cognac, armagnac, and sherry casks. I, again, I didn't know really what to expect going into this, but when I tried the samples for the first time, both of these bottles reminded me of other bottles. And so if you're in a similar boat and you're trying to figure out what exactly do these taste like, or what are some things that are comparative to this? Now, anything that we try today may not necessarily be accessible, one probably, but I just wanted to put this out here for comparison's sake. We're gonna taste through these two batches, we're gonna compare it to these other products, and we're gonna sum everything up. I've been asked several times for, for me to do more videos like this, tasting some samples that people send in. If you all are wanting to send samples in for me to do a video, or you wanna hear more content like that, leave me a message down below. Actually, while we have a minute, why don't you jump down below, leave a comment, Give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Help me grow the channel here in 2023. Everything that you add definitely helps for me doing that here. Well, let's go ahead and dive right on into this batch 22 first. I'm starting to think that it's the glasses that I have here that give such an unassuming color, but we have just good golden color here. But what I'm loving about this is when we get to the nose. Now, it seems like these older batches were known to be MGP blended barrels. Again, we have them finished. I think I was just so surprised when I started reading some of the ages that go into this. And so on the nose to this one, I get a lot of cigar box. I get a lot of old leather notes. It's kind of musty, has that kind of old, slightly nutty funk to it, that earthy cognac-like funk to it. Some of the damp oak notes, a little bit of grassiness, then kind of a, a sugary sweetness at the end, kind of a chocolate malt ball, and again with that nuttiness on the nose. Let's go ahead and dive in first sip. The palate wasn't what I expected really from the nose, but it isn't all that dissimilar. It starts off uh, kind of spiced with some anise, some root beer-like qualities to it. Kind of a medicinal nuttiness there, rich uh, cocoa-like notes that kind of saturate on the tongue. It's got this espresso, covered earthiness, really pretty, almost uh, slightly sugary, but still earthy oak notes there, a lot of leather, and then a, a big vanilla pudding note towards the finish with kind of toasted brulee sugars as well. It gets a little dry, but it does have these big creamy sugary like notes. I've started using a, a new scoring system when, when uh, going to my whiskey and I collect those in a note. And I've had several people still kind of chime back in saying, hey Brian, why don't you start a Patreon? Why don't you start a place where I can ask for recommendations when I come to Louisville? Why don't you start a place for your own barrel picks? Why don't you have a place where you archive some of the scores for the things that you're tasting? If you're interested in any of those things, again, shoot me a message or leave a comment down below. Let me know if that'd be interesting. I'm still not quite sure that that's the type of platform that I wanna create personally for myself. I like to put this content out there without any attachments, but if you're interested in something like that, please uh, let me know. The finish, slightly tannic, Grows slightly sharp, but I'm really enjoying the flavors overall. Let's go to 46, because by 46, I think we have a bit of a contrast. And even here on the color, we're getting a little bit more of like a nutty brown. And, and even right away on the aromas, you can notice how different this is. It ramps up the char. It ramps up like kind of a smoky barrel toast. Right away though, it is rich. It is decadent, rich caramel notes, brown sugar notes, toffee notes leather, warm oak notes, dried fruit notes in here, but you still have that kind of earthy, musty grassiness. It's just not as antique or 
as a relaxed as in the batch 22. Got some dark chocolate covered oranges in here with a champagne-like acidity. I think you definitely maybe pick up some of the finishing a little bit more on the nose here. Very dense, very cakey. Let's go in for a taste. Trying batch 22, it was really hard to see, again, not knowing the brand, that it could get much better. And man, this one really packs a wallop. The palette is very heavy. It's very dark. There's more of the anise presence. There's more dark fruit, almost kind of medicinal, like the Russell's Reserve 03, or like the Wild Turkey 17 year bottled and bond in that regard. Dark cherry, caramel, vanilla bean, budge. You have a long, long spiced finish. It has some grape sweetness, kind of a tainted, nutty oakiness, the more it lingers. And then it has a, moves into a warming cinnamon note that's not as extended as the Ambarana, but it's in a similar camp. It's in a similar family in that regard. And then kind of lingering with some mint too. I love the flavors with Batch 22, but it seemed to get a little bit sharp. It kind of fall off in the finish a little quickly, which lost some of its points. Batch 46, where all the flavors, all the aromas, everything was a little bit more intense and so it scored higher. I still feel like I would probably lean myself towards Batch 22 in terms of overall drinkability, but let's take a break and talk about what they reminded me of. Batch 22, with that antiquiness, with the kind of old perfumed acidity, softer, easier notes still mixed with oak, it reminded me of the 2019 release of the Four Roses Small Batch Limited Edition. And then getting into the rich, kind of heavier notes in Batch 46, it reminded me of Bardstown Bourbon Company Discovery Batch 4. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of taste those compared to the bottle that I thought it was and kind of just do a quick side-by-side -side with that. Man, the more it's opened up, the more this Batch 22 kind of draws out some raisin notes draws out the kind of old antique leather. And then comparing quickly to the 19 Four Roses, you have maybe a slight bit more elegance in an elevated rye spice on the nose, otherwise really familiar nose, maybe a touch more sandalwood in the Four Roses. Let's go ahead and dive in on the palate because they're kind of close on the nose. The Four Roses maybe has a little bit more candied sweetness. It still kind of plays in the powder sugar and vanilla and raspberry camp like a lot of Four Roses products do, but there's something just so easy, perfumey, leathery about it that's just so enjoyable uh, as a pour just on its own. Batch 22 definitely carries a little bit more baking spice, a little bit more complex spiciness altogether. It doesn't quite have the sugary sweetness, the fruitiness that the Four Roses has, but I still believe that there are similarities to the two. Maybe the spiciness is more akin to the 2024 roses uh, in that regard, but it still kind of has the warm leathers and the antiquiness and slight perfuminess that maybe even most on the nose still draws me to the 19 Four Roses. Let's go ahead and compare now batch 46 to the Disco 4. The nose, man, the nose on 46 also has just really opened up. It's nice and sweet while still being heavy and having all kind of the dark fruit notes. And you would think that you're smelling an identical nose here with this Disco 4. And it's maybe give a little bit of a sweetness nod to the Joseph Magnus Batch 46 here. Let's go ahead and dive in on the palate. From the chocolate notes to the heavy dark fruits to the, the barrel char, and then that kind of nutty earthiness too, Bar Sound Discovery 4 is kind of delivering all those flavors. Let's go back to the Magnus Batch 46. Yes, yeah, similar to how I said about the last uh, comparison, you amplify some of the spice, but honestly, the Batch 46 compared to the Bargetown Bourbon Company is a lot more perfumed, a lot more fragrant, almost more like the Four Roses in Batch 22 in that regard. The more I drink it, the more I notice that the Bargetown does have more of the anise, more of the, the stronger ginger, citrus-like aggressive notes to it and the batch 46 is just very easy going still very sweet and saturated at the same time while still being decadent rich and carrying kind of some low tones to it as well overall really big fan 
really big fan of this. And I, and I mainly wanted to put it up against these two bottles because these are bottles that are similar price points retail. And, you know, I think the Barkstown Discovery 4 might still be able to be found in some places, but we also know a lot of people have been talking about even the Discovery, the newer Discovery bottles still being very, very good. So this is a product that we know has a consistency of enjoyable flavors kind of as the through line. The Four Roses LE we know is very difficult to find. The 19 was a special bottle for a lot of people in the Four Roses community. But again, if Joseph Magnus is something that is maybe a little bit more findable for you in your area, I think you're probably gonna end up with a bottle that is able to compete with, with some of the big bottles like the, some of these iconic Four Roses bottles here. So it's pretty interesting. Overall, really enjoy this. I'd really like to try some of the later releases and maybe I'll do another video down the line that uh, does that. Let me know, leave me some comments down below if you wanna see me try some other of the cigar blends. Again, I don't have access to them right now, but but you know I'm sure I can find uh, some samples of those to, to be able to continue to compare to see how maybe things have changed as the batches go on. But again, thanks for tuning into the video. Let me know if you all have tried Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend down below. I, I've, I missed the bus on this one. I didn't realize that I was missing out on such an enjoyable product, a finished product that to me doesn't really come off finished or it's at least done so well that it just really amplifies the whiskey as a whole and doesn't take away probably from the base spirit and doesn't exaggerate in what it does to it. It just creates a really nice uh, all around good drinking experience that we're putting up against some straight bourbon whiskeys here as well. Will, thank you so much for the samples. Let me know if you're enjoying the content here on the channel. Let me know if there's other things you want to hear me talk about in future videos, and I'd be glad to do so. Thanks, as always, for tuning in, everyone. And until next time, we'll see you all later.